They are magnificent, one of the most glorious sights on Earth. You just can't beat the exhilaration you feel being with dolphins in the wild. So why do we keep them in captivity? Why do we pay good money to see them in zoos and aquariums? That's the question Rico Barry is now asking, which is pretty remarkable when you consider he's the bloke who caught and trained Flipper, star of the 60s hit TV show. Rick's had an amazing change of heart. He's a man on a mission to free the dolphins. And to show he's deadly serious, he's organised the most audacious and dangerous rescue operation ever. There's something special about dolphins. They've been around for 65 million years. We all feel a special connection with dolphins. Their playful, intelligent natures have made them the aquatic icon of our time. The dolphin can look in the mirror and they know what they're looking at. Like humans or the great apes. There is something special about them. And it was this man, Rico Barry, who almost single-handedly ignited our affection. You're talking to a guy who has worked with dolphins for the last 50 years. You know, I've watched them give birth. I've nursed them back to health when they're sick. And so I, I see them differently than you. This is set up for humans, not for dolphins. And as you'll see tonight, this man's love affair with dolphins has made him a radical campaigner against those who want to exploit them. These fishermen, they seem to be uh, numb to it. They've been doing it for so long, they don't even think about it anymore. This is genocide. That's what's going on here. They call him Flipper, Flipper. As a young man, Rick captured and trained the dolphins for the 1960s hit TV show, Flipper. Well, it was probably the best and the worst thing to happen for dolphins. The men handle this creature with infinite care. The Flipper phenomenon sparked a worldwide demand for live dolphin shows. But even as he was making the series, Rick came to believe that dolphins were far too intelligent to be kept in captivity and forced to perform. I remember uh, putting a television set at the end of the dock on, at 7.30 on Friday night so Flipper could watch Flipper on TV. Well, that should tell you that they don't belong in captivity if they're that smart. Smile, though your heart is aching. Finally, when Flipper died in his arms, Rick's change of heart was complete. From that day forward, he declared a one-man war on the dolphin industry, becoming an eco-warrior who would go to any lengths to set them free. The very next day, I was in jail in Bimini in the Bahama Islands for trying to free a dolphin. I was going to free every captive dolphin that I could. So literally, it was an overnight turnaround? It was. It was immediate. I just, I just lost it. For the past 30 years, Rick has campaigned to free dolphins from marine parks around the globe. But it's here, in the fishing village of Taiji, in southern Japan, that he's come to the world's attention. Campaigning against an annual roundup of dolphins for the aquarium trade. It's a barbaric ritual he exposed in a documentary called The Cove one of the most audacious undercover missions in the history of the conservation movement. You can see this very small village is now has become infamous and, you know, on a national, international scale. So they blame that on me. We're returning to Taiji with Rick for the first time since the film's international release, as the locals prepare for this year's roundup. And he's a marked man, likely to be deported at any moment, and perhaps worse. Would it be safe to say the fishermen hate you, or is that an overstatement? It's an understatement. They would kill me if they could do it quietly. Taiji lies on the Pacific coast, it's outwardly beautiful and spectacular, but it hides a dirty secret. 
This is a drive boat right here. And this is the net they would use to bring the dolphin, seal the dolphin. An inlet known as the cove, where Rick's hidden cameras captured the annual roundup. Well, there it is. It's only a tiny stretch of water, but you can see how they had to go to such extraordinary measures to get pictures of the place. You can also see that green tarpaulin there on the side. That's the stuff they put over the top to hide the actual slaughter of the dolphins. They're herded like sheep. Banging on metal poles, the fishermen create a wall of sound to disorientate them and drive them into the cove. This is what they use right here to drive them in, this belt. So they bang on this end? Yep. And uh, sends out a... Uh, it terrorizes, literally terrorizes the dolphins, this sound. Dazed and confused, the dolphins are separated. Trainers from international marine parks handpick those that will make good performers, knowing full well the ones they reject will be butchered for food the following day. The chosen few are sent to the export pens. Those dolphins are being transported around the world to China, the Philippines, Turkey, Mexico. They've gone to the Miami Sea Aquarium, Sea World, places like that. And that's what keeps this slaughter going. What sort of price do they get for a dolphin? Uh, I know that they got $154,000 each for the 12 that were sold to the Dominican Republic. For Taiji's fishermen, it's big business. Profits well worth protecting and nothing they feel they have to justify. Hey, 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 don't push me. These men just don't seem to get it that much of the world believes what they're doing borders on sheer savagery. They refer to dolphins as cockroaches of the sea. And when you see the pathetic fate of some of the dolphins, it's sickening. It's extreme violence. Uh, it's extremely brutal. And uh, it's unbelievable. This cove will go from the most beautiful, tranquil, quiet, peaceful environment to Dante's Inferno for dolphins in a matter of, you know, it's like, it's a schizophrenic place. It's schizophrenic, all right. Only 100 metres from where the sea turns red with blood, there's a marine park for tourists, where you can have a bite to eat at the kiosk. They actually sell the dolphin meat right in here. You can watch this dolphin show, and you can eat a dolphin at the same time you're watching the show. But away from the main performance, it's not such a postcard perfect sight. Smile, your heart is this one here is spending a lot of time in the corner. Yeah, it's depressed. This is captive dolphin depression syndrome. This is cruel and unusual. Yeah, it's like a bathtub. All of this is run by Taiji's local council, which, incidentally, is a sister city of Broome in Western Australia. We want to know when your mayor is going to put a stop to the killings. This week, Broome will decide whether or not to disown Taiji. But no one here at City Hall was ready to talk about it. Are all your officials too busy washing dolphin blood off their hands? If you're rolling the camera, I'm not going to talk to you. So, we went to see Mr. Yoshito Omozaki from Japan's Whale and Dolphin Meat Culinary Association. Can you understand why many Australians would consider what you're doing to be barbaric? Yes, I can. I do understand the feeling. But I'd like to say that for Japanese people, killing kangaroo is a sad and unbearable. Don't you think he's the same? Are you saying we're hypocritical? Yes, I can. Mr. Omozaki went on to say it was more than hypocrisy. I think there's a racism towards people of colour. So we ask fishermen in Taiji to stop killing dolphins, and we are racist? Yes, that's how we understand it. 
って私たちは。We never tell you in Australia to stop killing kangaroo or wild camera. Rico Barry would like to see every captive dolphin back in the wild. And for all of us to reject dolphin shows in favor of appreciating them in their natural environment. To experience for ourselves what Rick is talking about, we've come to Rockingham, just south of Perth, one of the rare places you can interact with dolphins in the wild. A few minutes offshore, we found them. Okay, guys, go! Go, go, go! And it was truly remarkable. The dolphins actually played with us. There was nothing to entice them. No food, no nets. All we needed were underwater scooters to keep up. It's hard to imagine why the Japanese regard them as pests to be exterminated. When you get that close to them, in this sort of situation, in this setting, you, 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 you wouldn't even think about trying to hurt one, would you? No, nah, no, nah, not at all. You know, they're just, uh, just a beautiful animal and uh, they've got that beautiful dolphin smile and, um, you know, it just brings a, you know, that smile out in us, you know? <laughs> it does. Yeah. Well, they eyeball you, you know? Yeah, so they're looking at you and sort of, as you twist and turn there, yeah. they're daring you to come with me. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's, that's what they're wanting. Terry Howson used to swim with the dolphins as a teenager and has spent the years since taking tourists under the water. I believe uh, so strongly in keeping them in the wild um, and I believe these days that's what people want to see. You think they're capable of forming friendships, do you? Absolutely, 100%. It's the same remarkable bond that keeps Rico Barry going in his campaign. He hopes by shining a global spotlight on Taiji's annual horror show and creating international pressure and shame that the Japanese will have no choice but to stop. If they don't, neither will he. When you see what goes on in the cove, it's really difficult to sleep. When you see it, you can't unsee it. it those images stay with you forever. And it still give you nightmares? Yeah. Yeah, I think about it all the time. We should get out of here before they call the police. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our extra minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.